Hi, my name is Dave Stukas. I'm an allergist and immunologist and associate professor of pediatrics at Nationwide Children's Hospital and Ohio State University in Columbus, Ohio. And what I'd like to talk about over the next few minutes is the use of food allergy panel testing and the pitfalls that lie within. The diagnosis of food allergy can be somewhat complicated. The most important aspect is the history of what symptoms occurred after ingestion. This includes the type of symptoms that the patient reports, the timing of symptom onset, and what food caused the um, suspected reaction. When somebody presents with a suspicious history that's supported by the history, we have three different ways to test for that. One way, which is the gold standard, is through an oral food challenge in the office. But oftentimes, we will utilize both skin prick and or blood IgE testing to determine whether or not the patient is actually producing specific IgE towards a certain food. This video will focus on the blood IgE testing. Blood IgE tests can be useful when uh, there's limited access to skin prick testing or um, patients are having testing done for other reasons. And what this does is it gives a range of values, which generally goes down to 0.1 kilounits per liter up to 100 as the highest limit of detection. Now, there are some misconceptions about the way these food allergy tests may work and how they should be interpreted. Just because a patient is producing some amount of specific IgE does not mean that they are allergic. And we know that about 30% of the general population will produce detectable IgE you can find on a blood test just by testing alone, but they're eating the food just fine. The size of the test result does not predict the severity of a reaction, which can range from mild hives to life-threatening anaphylaxis. But the size of the test result does help predict the likelihood that somebody may be allergic when the history supports that. So if blood IgE tests are used frequently for food allergy uh, screening or diagnosis, they oftentimes will be um, misinterpreted, and this can lead to overdiagnosis of food allergy. This can be a particular problem when different foods are bundled together on commercially available food allergy panels. So there are many laboratories that will offer uh, testing for several different foods as a way to, quote unquote, screen your patients to see if they have food allergy. Well, unfortunately, because of the high rates of falsely elevated results, which can lead to overdiagnosis and misinterpretation, this can lead to a big problem on a population level. And we know that there are several studies that have shown a few things. One, these food allergy panel tests are often overused. And two, they are misinterpreted, which leads to unnecessary uh, removal of food from the diet. And when those patients are further evaluated by oral food challenges, they're often determined that they're not allergic. So it is strongly discouraged, as in the Choosing Wisely series, um, published by the American Academy of Allergy, Asthma, and Immunology in 2012, strongly discouraged to use any sort of food allergy IgE panel tests in the evaluation of patients with suspected food allergy. Now, should it be determined that they may benefit from food allergy testing, then absolutely you can use specific foods when you order a blood test but make sure you only order the foods that you're worried about based upon the history.